Annie Frank. By Mary Nin. Pictures by Yulia Zolotova. Hi, I'm Annie Frank. <coughs> when, <coughs> when Adolf Hitler became the president of Germany, persecution against Jews was growing and I was Jewish. So when I was <coughs> only four years old, we fled Germany to live in the Netherlands. <coughs> Germany, Netherlands. Moving to a new country meant I had to learn new customs customs and a new language. It was hard but I adapted. This helped me settle into my new school pretty well. But then came the start of World War II. The Nasus invaded the Netherlands where my family had thought we'd be safe. Life as a Jew was hard. We were not allowed to live <coughs> our lives normally. We had to wear a yellow patch on our clothes. We had to hand in our bicycles. And we were only allowed to do our shopping between the hours of three, uh, three and five o'clock. When they said we couldn't go to school, with some of our friends and neighbours. I was crushed. We had to go to the Jewish schools only. I was really sad about the new laws. So to cheer me up, <coughs> Mum and Dad threw me a party and brought me some gifts for my 13th birthday. My favourite gift was a journal. It would soon become a close convey to the kind of friend who was always patient. I named her Kitty. I didn't know that would be my last birthday celebrated in freedom. The Nazis were gathering up all the Jews and eventually they sent a notice ordering Margot to be sent to a labour camp. It was too late for us to leave the country. We knew we couldn't stay so we went into hiding. We lived for two years in my father's office building, in a secret space behind a bookshelf that I dubbed the secret annex, our hiding place, was was small for eight people. It was it was comprised of our family of four and another family of three. The Van Pels and the son Peter. A while later we welcomed another person. Fristis Perfe Dad Daddy and I adapted really relatively fast, but Man Margot and Mum had a rougher time. The few people who helped us bought food, I 
their new books. We were so thankful and I called them our projectors. They could have been punished for helping us, but they did it anyways. In the secret annex, we had to be very quiet. All the people downstairs in the factory could hear us and report us one day. Margot had a bad cold. We didn't dare let her cough for fear of them finding us. So we gave her lots of cough medicine. After another day, a man came to do some hand, handy work in the factory downstairs. After he had worked for almost 15 minutes, we heard him lay, lay his hammer and tools down. And that's when we heard a knock at the secret door to the annex. I was so scared. I imaged a giant growing bigger and bigger in a size with each knock he made. Open the door, it's only me. I was so relieved to hear Jonathan's voice. Thank goodness. If we caught, if we were caught, we would have been sent away to indoor construction camps. If we were caught, we would have been sent away to labour construction camps. Their people were treated very badly and often starved to death or die. I couldn't go to school anymore, but I wouldn't give up on my education, no matter what, how hard the naysayers tried to deny it to me. I continued to study and learn. I remained hopeful that we could, that we would one day come out of hiding and go back to our normal lives. I wanted to grow up to become a writer. I loved to write. I learned as much as I could from the books that we had and I practiced in my journal. I wrote all about our lives in hiding, my feelings, my fears, my hopes and my dreams. For two years in hiding, I was deprived of my freedom. I did not feel the window, go outside or breathe the fresh air. Even though times were hard, I never gave up hope on myself. New hum humanity. Where there's hope, there's life. It fills us with fresh courage and makes us strong again. I didn't want to get to grow up. Our hiding place was discovered and we were sent away to conjugation camp. I died there with my sister when I was just 15 years old. After the war, the only person who survived was my father. He went back to Amsterdam to look for us and learned that we had all died. Meep gave him the journal that she had found and hid after our capture. When my father decided to publish my journal, I became a published author. 
With my words, I spoke for six million people who had been terrorised and oppressed like we had. I refused to be silenced and my story was heard around the world. Those who have courage and faith shall never perish in misery. 1926, Annie born in Frankfurt, Germany. 1933, Annie moves to Netherlands to avoid growing anti semiston in Germany. 1936, I mean, 1939, World War II starts. 1940, Germany invades Netherlands. 1942, Annie goes into secret, into hiding in a secret annex. 1944, Annie and her family are sent to conjugation camps. 1945, war ends. 1947, Annie's diary is published for the first time. 1959, Annie's Diary is made into a film and and a play 